I have got the ultra budget lighting setup for you on this one. And if you are new around here and you know that I typically film with aperture light domes, one here in the back and then my key light, well, today we are going ultra budget. So let's get into it. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today we are working on some uber cheap, very inexpensive lighting here uh, for the community. And like I said, if you're new here, then this is kind of a moodier setup. But if you uh, know the studio and you have been following me for a while, you know that I typically use an aperture light dome for my key light, and that's pushed out with the Godox SL60W. And then I also have a light in the back with the aperture light dome mini, also with an SL60W. But today we are just using a very inexpensive shop lamp that I picked up from the hardware store along with just a regular LED bulb and then just a little bit of lighting uh, from the monitor in the background. But I do have my shades pulled and of course, for very good reason, I all, my, my shades are always pulled to be able to control that light. Now, before we actually get into this elaborate setup in front of me, what I wanna do specifically is talk about the bulbs really quickly. And I compared two bulbs. I have the EcoSmart bulb, which is right here, but I also have uh, another one because they came in a pair for around $8. Now these are 100 watt equivalent LED bulbs and I would recommend at least 100 watt equivalent to, you know, I think the brighter the better because the more light you have, then we can actually diffuse that. But I'll talk about the diffusion in a second. But what I wanted to do is compare it to the Cree light bulb, which I'm actually being lit by the Cree right now. And the reason being is that there is an index, a measurement called the CRI, the Color Rendering Index. And basically what that is, is it just gives us a measurement against a reference light as far as the color rendering that occurs. So these are rated at around 5,000 Kelvin, which is around daylight when we measure that. And so when we're filming and our camera is already dialed in for the white balance and everything, it should be a truer color, the higher the number. So in comparison, the EcoSmart bulbs, even though they're eight bucks for a box of two or two in the box, the CRI on that is around 83. And that's per the manufacturer's website. Now with the Cree, they actually boast a greater than 90 on the CRI. So a truer color reference for filming or for lighting your subject. So that is actually why I'm filming with the Cree, although I did try the EcoSmart and it's not like these bulbs will go to waste because I can pop them in a lamp or a light fixture or somewhere else in the home and not be out the money or at least the investment that I made. So don't get too caught up in that, but you can certainly search that online before you go into the store or order it online. And of course, I'll link up a couple of options below. Now the lamp itself is something that I picked up from the hardware store and they can range anywhere between six to 12 or 13 dollars now the particular one that i purchased was actually a heat lamp rated light and of course it's rated up to about a 300 watt bulb although these led bulbs and and what i typically use will not go that high but one of the reasons why i purchased it like that is because it actually came with this wire dome on the face of it because if i wanted to actually put diffusion right over the lamp itself to do any kind of product shots or anything like that then I thought, well, it's a nice little ad to have. Now, when we talk about lighting your subject, one of the things that you have to consider is that you need some type of diffusion or you need to bounce this light. And that's also another reason why I recommend these shop lamps is because they have a dome or a reflector. And that reflector allows you to actually fold that or push that light in the direction that you need it to go in. So the first little setup that I did was I clamped it on top of my ladder and just bounced it off of the wall and ceiling in front of me just to get a little bit of light on my face. And of course it was very soft, but it was able to actually work. Now my second setup was bringing that ladder in and then actually setting it up with a hula hoop that I found, which I don't even, I can't even remember where that hula hoop came from and then having the shop lamp, the hula hoop, and then using a shower curtain that we had around the home. So a shower curtain that actually is somewhat permeable, I'm not talking about one of the plastic ones, but it's very similar in the diffusion material that is on my aperture light dome. 
So using something like that, it allows you to actually filter that light because if you put it right on your face, it is very harsh. And if you are filming another subject, well, quite frankly, they're not gonna be very pleased about it. But one of the things that I didn't really like was the lamp was actually being blocked, or at least the light was being blocked a little bit by the ladder itself, the way that I had it positioned. So I decided to go back to the drawing board and bring in another ladder to this scenario and then put the shower curtain back as far as the, the rings on the shower curtain and bring in a couple of uh, handles that I had, some broomsticks or shovel handles that I had in the garage to be able to mount the lamp and the shower curtain together so that I could still get that diffusion and then allow me to actually diffuse the light without it being blocked. Now, of course, in this setting, it's, this is very close to the way that I like to light things. And of course it is very moody, but something else that you could do is if you want to set up a light on the other side of you to light more of your face. So adding another lamp is possible, but I just wanted to keep it right here on the budget between 20 and $30 and just kind of using the one light. Of course, you could purchase a reflector online and I'll, I'll link one up that I highly recommend or what you could potentially do here if you have some aluminum foil sitting around. You could put something together. I just found a piece of foam that I had in my garage and taped it with some tape that I have. And if you needed to bounce some of that light to give you to fill that negative space. And of course, this would have to be hung up or mounted somewhere just out of the shot. And of course, if you have to punch in on the shot, that's one thing that you could do. I know it doesn't seem very professional. However, the thing is, is that I see a lot of people getting caught up in the start and all of the technology. Listen, if you have a really decent smartphone or if you have a camera and you have a way to get some decent audio, and of course I've done a ton of videos on audio and I will link those up as well. But the thing is, is if you're not getting your start because you're held up, because you think that you need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on lighting, well, I'm just trying to prove a point here that you can just spend a few dollars or even look around your home to see if there's a way that you can light yourself. And so I just want people to start creating and get going. So as far as it looking professional, I mean, my studio is a, a wreck in here because what you see behind me is really nice and pretty and what you see in front of me, not so much, but I don't care about it. I just wanna create that value here for you. So I will look at all of this to provide you with something that you can take away and start creating. What questions can I answer for you? What kind of conversations can we have down below? As always, you go out there and do those things that matter. You keep rocking the faces. Go out there and do the things or do the things in your own studio. I'm gonna keep creating value for you here. And until next time, I will catch you right back here on the next one.